Okay, so with my layers locked down and my images uh, unlocked, uh, what I'm going to do is I've got my uh, selection tool selected. I'm going to select this guy and say I can move this guy around and the text flows all over the place. Um, if I hit my A tool, which gets my direct selection, you'll notice that um, the the uh, the picture box itself it kind of turns um, all the little points uh, everything is select but the points the individual points themselves are, are filled with white which meaning they're unselected and then I got this hand okay this is wild this hand is actually if I was to click on here and drag and hold on the inside you'll see there is the actual image itself so what you have is you've got the image which is placed you know inside this the picture box that you've drawn and when you drag this stuff out like this it does get kind of chunky and slow so there's this image uh, kind of like hanging out and and the the picture box that you draw is actually kind of like the crop area so everything outside this area is being cropped out and then everything inside this area is is visible and so so I got a problem here so I'm like well I want to get this entire picture to fit inside how do I do that I can go in here and I can go over here you can see and this gets kind of confusing if you got really big pictures. So I can go over here to my actual physical picture size. I can hold the shift key down and I can scale it down, right? And kind of do that and then kind of like move stuff around. You know, and, and it's getting there. I can, I can get it down that way. Way faster way to do it is I'm going to actually hold down my, um, I'm going to go up to my direct selection tool. And I'm going to select this, this, this picture box itself. I'm going to hold down my control. I want to get my contextual menus up while I have this, uh, this picture box selected. Hold on control key, click. And then I get all of the options, many of the options that, that come along with, um, uh, with, with picture boxes in general. So I'm going to go down here to fitting. So I can fit the content to the frame. I can fit the frame to the content, I can center the content, I can fit content proportionally, and fill frame proportionally. Usually I choose this one, fit content proportionally, meaning it scales it down and just sticks it nicely inside that, uh, that uh, the box that I've drawn. So I can go in here and I can release this, pow, it automatically shrinks it down, makes it a nice proportional size. So what I can do is I can now go in here and you'll see now we've got uh, the actual, you know, picture inside the picture box so you've got the image and then the picture box kind of like the crop zone right so I can go in here and I can maybe scale it up a bit and hold my shift key down to make sure everything is is uh, is nice and unique um, and also proportionate um, so that's how you throw in a picture uh, with a text wrap the next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, go in and we're going to change some of these colors here because these colors up in here are kind of lame -o. And I can't click on any of this stuff right now because it's locked. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to actually lock my images, unlock my body copy. And I'm just locking these guys just to speed up everything. So if I hit F5, for example, I'm going to get some colors up in here. If I hit F5, I'm just going to pull this away, this, this color swatches, so it's there. So these are all the colors that I have right now to choose from and there's not a lot so I want to make some more colors I can do this a couple different ways I'm gonna go in here and I can go I can duplicate a color for example I can select this green and I can click on this guy I can make a new swatch so it's gonna make a copy of this so I can double click on this and I can get there's different ways to do this I can get um, uh, different color values uh, different naming scenarios uh, usually I just keep this one on name with color value and what that does is that gives me the breakdown so cyan is 75 percent out of 100 magenta for example is 5 percent out of 100 yellow is 100 percent out of 100 and K is black um, and uh, K is 0 black is 0 percent um, there are different uh, color types process meaning cyan magenta yellow and black and spot spot meaning that that it's it's a special ink um, it would be turned into a special ink uh, that that the printer would use instead of uh, four colors to, to make to make one color the printer would actually uh, mix up one own special color so uh, this green would would consist of one ink whereas if it was process it would consist of four inks combined together the cyan the magenta the yellow and the black so that's a breakdown on on the, the process on the spot uh, the color mode CMYK there's all different kinds of, of color modes here you usually want to stick with CMYK unless you're using spot colors or anything like that and this is where you get into 
uh, Pantone colors, process colors, coated, uncoated. Uh, coated stands for, for shiny paper. Uh, uncoated stands for kind of not shiny paper, like um, not craft paper, but just not very glossy stuff uh, because the inks behave differently on either one of these uh, papers. So we're going to just stick to CMYK at the moment. We're going to cover the spot stuff later on. Um, so it's fine. I can modify this. I can make it yellow. I can make it orange, blah, blah, blah. It's totally, you know, up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from, I'm going to get some greens up in here. And sometimes, depending on the actual breakdown of the RGB or the CMYK breakdown, you can pull colors right out of your pictures. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you want to get total representation, I'd recommend going into your Photoshop file and sampling there instead of sampling out of your, your InDesign file. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, I'm going to I'm gonna get a green in here going on, a dark green. I'm going to go OK. I can make a new swatch just like so. And I'm going to make maybe this one, uh, bring it in here, I can make it an orange. And I'd recommend making colors out of process because the spot colors themselves, the Pantone colors like I kind of hit with, there's millions of colors to choose from, but those colors are special colors, special inks are used to make those colors. So chances are when you use those colors, um, you, the printer won't be able to reproduce them very well. Um, some of them go kind of nutty when you when you convert them over to CMYK. Uh, just a tip. Uh, so we're gonna maybe do a, I don't know a, you know, a pink here. I'm just gonna do up a couple different ones here, and maybe I can use you know you can use different variations. So this blue, for example, I can go here and make a new swatch. Go in here. I'm gonna play with uh, let's see hmm, maybe a dark kind of a tealy looking color here. And I want an orange too, so I'm gonna actually go in here and duplicate another one. And we're gonna bring this down, bring that up. Get some uh, some different colors, and you notice I'm just running through here, just kind of popping them off, different variations on one particular theme. Oh, and by the way, all this stuff right here, these little squares with the blue, the magenta, the yellow, and the black, this is indicating that these are all CMYK, except for these two. These two are RGB. Never use RGB colors. Um, in the end, you want to be printing in, in CMYK, always, unless someone tells you not to. So we got some colors in here. So now I've got these colors set up. What I'm going to do is go to my body copy, for example, and I'm just going to start selecting text and chunking them in. So I'm going to go in here and select my, my text box right over here. I'm going to select my, my type tool right up in there in my swatches. And you'll see it's filled. It says, I don't know, there's a little question mark there saying I'm not sure what you want me to fill with. I'm going to click on this guy. Done. That's all you got to do. And you can want, run through and change it to whatever color you want. Uh, I'm going to change it to uh, just kind of make it this, this bright orange um, just for kicks and giggles. And we're going to change this one to maybe a oops, you notice when it defaults, when you select something, it defaults to the actual text box itself. So if I click on this, it's going to fill this entire text box with color, which is cool too if you want to do that. What I want to do is I want to get the text selected. So I'm going to say, hey, which text, this text here, I want you to fill with. So we're going to maybe fill that with, with teal there. And these colors totally don't match. I'm just picking arbitrary colors just to, for a good example here. Um, let's see, maybe uh, we'll go down here. This guy could be, and we're doing it again. This guy could be maybe this bright color here, converted as marketing. These are horrible colors, my god. I'm going to go over here, and maybe I'll want uh, some blues. Then we'll do this blue too. Right, uh, there we go. So now we got some color applied here, which is kind of cool. And what I'm going to do is hit W to hide all my guides and stuff. So there we are. Looks kind of weird. I probably have to adjust the spacing in here. Um, and by the way, just so you know, uh, for example, I can, I'm going to take this, this chunk of text over here. Kind of funny right here. What I can do is I can apply transparencies to this also. And just a, a preview of, of what transparencies can do. Right up here in the top, you got this FX. Same kind of stuff in Photoshop. I wouldn't touch a lot of these. Some of them work, some of them don't. But what does work, and what I know works, is the transparency. So if I click on transparency, I can change this to multiply, and I'm going to turn on my preview. So it multiplies, you've got a screen, you've got an overlay, you've got a soft light, a hard light, 
uh, color dodge, which works interesting, color burn, difference, which reverses.